uh, we have a table here where we have a lot of literature. We've given you out some literature, but we have other interesting stuff here. Uh, we're putting on a seminar, and it's free because it's in our office, so we don't have the expenses that Dr. Chowdhury and the staff had. And it starts a week from tomorrow, and we have 35 different presentations. If you didn't get this flyer, we have it on our table. Also, I wanted to mention that I'm president of Nutritional Frontiers, which is a nutritional company which is only uh, distributed through practitioners. And if you're interested in our products, because I think there's a lot of products relate to mental and emotional health, and it's not the single bullet theory. A lot of these products are combination products with four, five, six different ingredients. And we've had people with Alzheimer's disease, a bipolar disorder, uh, schizophrenia, uh, mood changes, depression, anxiety helped with these nutritional supplements. Unfortunately, we've lost 80% of the nutritional value of our foods in the last 50 years. So I appreciate what Dr. Seebeck said. About 7,000 years ago, they were trying to use food first. But we've lost 8% of the nutritional value of our foods, and we also have genetically modified foods. Approximately 70% of your produce is genetically modified. So it's a whole different ball game than it was uh, even 50 or 100 years ago. So there is a place for nutritional supplements. Also, did everyone get a copy of this presentation, the slide presentation? If you didn't, we have more at our table afterwards. Uh, we have literature on our products like the Mood Lift, and we have the uh, Brain and Mood Solutions. Dr. Chowdhury is carrying these products. Uh, also, uh, we have this thing, I, I, the Climax, you'll see there's a picture of before and after a guy with cancer, and we do have uh, pictures of that if you didn't get it. Also, our radio schedule, you should have gone. Okay, let's get to the presentation. And basically, I want to outline the difference between what I feel is addressing the cause of illness, the causes of illness, versus treating the symptoms, which I think is the major problem in U.S. healthcare today. Well, no, let's see, uh, maybe I'm not doing the right one. There we go. Okay, we're only 4% of the world's population in the United States. We're consuming. 75% of the world's drugs, and we're 72nd in health. So this system is a failed system. Uh, what recently was enacted as the Affordable Care Act does not address this problem at all. It basically is a subsidy for the status quo, which is failing. We spend twice as much on health care than anywhere else in the world. We're 17 in infant mortality. We're 72nd in health. The life expectancy of children under the age of 20 is actually lower than those of us over 60. I'm 68. And the third leading cause of death admitted to in the United States is properly prescribed medications. If you watch the television ads, uh, there's only a couple countries in the entire world that allow drug advertising. If you pay attention with all the distractions, with the music and people running through uh, uh, flower fields and having picnics and all this crazy stuff, uh, you'll find out that like Lamisil, which is a preparation for toe fungus, can kill you. They don't tell you you can use about 10 cents worth of bleach to get rid of the toe fungus. So here we are in healthcare systems, 37th among nations, 72nd in overall health. As I mentioned before, we've lost most of the nutritional value of our food. The Department of Agriculture is run by executives from Monsanto that gave you Terminator seeds and genetically modified food. And if you don't know what all that is, uh, I would definitely look it up. There's a wonderful uh, video on YouTube called Genetic Roulette. Genetic Roulette, a real mind opener. Uh, I suggest everyone watch that film, Genetic Roulette. Unfortunately, uh, medical schools uh, are controlled by drug companies, and so there's virtually no real training in nutrition, certainly not therapeutic nutrition. And, uh, you know, the Food and Drug Administration is basically run by the drug companies and agribusiness. And I, I get this question a lot about, well, are your supplements approved by the FDA? No, uh, the FDA doesn't really do any testing. I don't know if you're aware of this. The drug testing is done through uh, doctors and hospitals paid for by the drug companies. 
and then they approve the drug. And of course, very often the drug research is very uh, edited. For example, Vioxx. How many people have heard of Vioxx? Vioxx was an arthritic drug that killed over 150,000 people in the United States alone and maimed over a million more. The Food and Drug Administration never took it off the shelves. Merck, the manufacturer, voluntarily did it after they had to pay out over $4 billion in lawsuits. That's just the cost of doing business because they made over $44 billion with a B, second letter of the alphabet. So it's just the cost of doing business, costing 10% to pay out to the families of all the people that remained or killed by this arthritic drug. And it ends up that the research was faked at no less a place than the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio, one of the top heart hospitals in the country. They found, and they did not report, that Vioxx was causing heart attacks and strokes. <clears throat> now, how about vitamins? Vitamins are on a generally recognized as safe list, so they actually are approved by the FDA. The ingredients and supplements have to be on that list or they're not allowed to be sold. The uh, war on cancer has been a total flop. I think Dr. Seebeck mentioned something about uh, President Nixon going to China and seeing operations performed without anesthesia. And if you didn't hear my question, the whole thing is that anesthesia is a very dangerous procedure and can totally uh, ruin someone's mind, cognitive function, uh, energy levels, and plus a lot of people die from it. And anesthesiologists who finish the anesthesia actually have the highest malpractice insurance rate of any specialty in the entire medical field. But they never use a less profitable procedure or product in the medical field in the United States when there's a more profitable procedure or product. So acupuncture costs nothing, so they're not going to use it. <clears throat> chemotherapy fails 90% of the time. Outside of uh, some non-solid tumors, chemotherapy is basically a total flop, and it does not work, generally speaking, once the uh, cancer is spread from one organ to another organ. In fact, they've done uh, surveys of oncologists, cancer specialists. You know what an oncology, does someone here know what the word oncology means or oncologist? It means the study of bumps. That's what they're doing is studying the symptom of the cancer, not looking at the cause of the cancer. And we know people have their breasts chopped off, have their prostate removed, and yet the cancer comes back very often in the same exact place. So they're just treating a symptom. Then we have the overprescription of uh, antibiotics. And even if you're not taking antibiotics, you may be consuming it in your milk or uh, your meat. And this is causing fungal infections, wrongly labeled C. diff. Uh, the statin drugs, the cholesterol. And let me ask a question. Anyone here on any prescription medications? I I'm not going to single you out. Just let's see. A uh, few people here. OK, I don't want to brag. I'm 68. I'm on no medications. Statin drugs actually cause all kinds of problems, including diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, liver damage, liver failure, muscle pain, and weakness. Just to mention a few of the problems with statin drugs. And in fact, most people that have heart attacks actually have low cholesterol. So it's just a money-making scam. Diuretics. I know many people have ended up with diabetes from water pills, which are considered the safest uh, blood pressure pills, incidentally. Did you know they artificially lowered the so-called standard, uh, the parameters for blood pressure? Not based on any science, just based on trying to sell more drugs, because now more people fall into the uh, abnormal range than they were 20 years ago when the range was 120 to 160 for the top number. Now you're 125, 130, they want to throw medication at you. Same thing with cholesterol. Normal cholesterol generation ago was considered 300. Now they're saying they want you on drugs if you're over 200. Cholesterol is necessary nutrient, incidentally. You wouldn't be here without it. And I've had uh, people who own dialysis clinics. A friend of mine's a medical doctor, owns two of them. They tell me that 90% of the people that are on artificial kidney dialysis are there because drugs ruin the kidneys. I actually had a patient that died from taking Cipro as a preventative when she scalded her foot with some boiling water. She went to the emergency room, they put her on Cipro, and she was dead the next day. All right, now, the conventional approach is treating symptoms with drugs. 
That is, if you go to a Med Express or a hospital and you have a symptom, they're going to treat the symptom. Let's say you have a fever. They're going to want to lower the fever. They're not understanding why you have that fever. Why is your body creating a fever? Anyone in this room know? It's to kill off bacteria and viruses and possibly even cancer. So my position is the body is always doing the right thing. We have to figure out why it's doing it. You have rheumatoid arthritis. You have irritable bowel syndrome. Why do you have this inflammation? Maybe it's the food you're eating. Now, I don't know if we passed out the food allergy sheets. I think Candace did. Otherwise, we have that literature here. This is a major problem. I just read the book uh, Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis, MD. And I was going to bring it in, but I figured I didn't have time. On page 44, he talks about inflammation being caused by wheat, but it can be caused by any of the foods you're eating, including the genetically modified food or the pesticides. So when you hear this label, of autoimmune disease. I don't believe there is such a thing. Your body is doing a normal immune response to something that is foreign in the body. It could be the pesticides, could be foods you're allergic to, could be how they've genetically modified this food. So we don't want to kill the messenger. We want to figure out why your body is mounting this immune response. And that's what we do in natural healing. We're trying to figure out the underlying causes of your problem and not treat the symptoms. Okay, you can have the same symptom for completely different reasons. And I picked the example of headaches. You might have a brain tumor. Maybe you have a misaligned vertebrae. Maybe you have high blood pressure. Maybe you have food allergies. Maybe you have low blood sugar. Maybe you have nutrient deficiencies. You know, it was interesting today, sitting at the table, listening to the speakers, I got a text from a friend of mine, and his girlfriend's over, and she has a headache. He said, what should I do? Well, I don't think aspirin's the answer. She doesn't have an aspirin deficiency. I said she may have a magnesium deficiency. We find that at least 50% of the people with severe headaches are lacking magnesium because they're not eating enough greens or they're drinking soda pop. Someone back here was drinking soda pop, and I put a whole article there about the hazards of soda pop that we have over at the table. I saw that. I ran back to the table and put it underneath that person's bottle of soda pop. They're leaching out minerals. I don't care. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to be effective, okay? People will come in. I remember one time a woman came in with her adult daughter. The girl was maybe 26, 27, had a marriage ring, married. And after about 10 minutes, she said, you know, Dr. Weiner, I don't know if I like you or not. I said, that's totally irrelevant. You're married. We're not going out on a date. You're here to figure out if I can help you. Who cares if you like me? So, you know, sometimes it's stepping on toes. People are so emotionally attached to the food they're eating. Oh my God, I have this, I gotta tell you the story, it's not on the, on the uh, presentation here. Some years ago, a psychologist, who I knew very well, referred a patient to me. The man was 27 years old. He had just finished his residency in dermatology, skin problems. So he went through grade school, high school, undergraduate school, med school, internship, residency. And now he has terminal melanoma. And he knows it's terminal because they kept cutting it off, kept coming back. He's a dermatologist now. He knows. He was recently married, has his whole life ahead of him. He has spent all this time and money and energy to educate himself for his profession. So he calls me on the phone. But he wouldn't come to my office because I'm a chiropractor. You don't want to be seen with a chiropractor if you're a medical doctor. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do, doctor. I'll come to your house. You'll make a house call. How much? I said, it's the same, $75. Whether you come to my office or I come to your house. He said, great. He said, now what are you going to recommend? Because, you know, we have no answers in modern medicine. They're saying I'm a dead man. I said, look, you're 27 years old. You've got a lot of life force. What we're going to do is give you a diet that will enhance your body's ability to heal itself. We're going to enhance the immune system. We're going to detoxify the body. We're going to alkalize the body. We're going to correct the potassium sodium imbalance. He said, well, every night I have milk and cookies before bedtime. I said, you're going to have to cut it out. So anyhow, we scheduled for a Sunday. I came home about an hour before I was supposed to drive to his house. And I saw the answering machine flickering, so I listened, and it was his wife saying she was canceling the appointment 
but if I wanted to, I could call. So I called and she answered the phone. I hadn't spoken to her before. She said, when you mentioned to my husband that he has to cut out the milk and cookies, he got very upset because he's been having milk and cookies since he was a little boy. His parents would read him a bedtime story and give him some milk and cookies. I said, this is the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. It's his life. The guy's only 27. He just got married to you. He went through all this schooling. He's got his whole life ahead of him. So what if he has to get off milk and cookies for six months? Well, well, think about it. Well, about four months later, I saw his name in the obituary. And I can tell you, we have a patient, and I'm allowed to tell her name, Glenda. She came to me 14 years ago with stage 4 terminal melanoma. She's alive and well today. And if anyone wants her phone number, she's allowed me to give out her phone number. I don't have it here, but you can call her office. Okay? We can talk about Bill Cowher's wife, the coach of the Steelers years ago. His wife, Kay, who was an athlete. She came down with melanoma. That's why they moved back to North Carolina, so she could go to Duke University for the most advanced treatment. She's dead. Glenda was in her late 60s. She's now, I guess, in her late 70s, somewhere in there. And she's alive. Okay, so as I showed you, headache, you can have a lot of different reasons, but medical doctors will treat the symptoms the same way. If you have high blood pressure, they're not trying to figure out uh, you, you know, why you have high blood pressure, maybe you have food allergies or misaligned vertebrae, if you really do have high blood pressure, they're going to give the same type of drugs, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, diuretics, etc. So the diagnosis is not important to me. The label's not important because you can have 20 people with irritable bowel syndrome and each one would have a different trigger. You can have 20 people with rheumatoid arthritis, each person has a different trigger. If you go to a medical doctor, what are they going to do? Probably give you prednisone and cortisone. You have asthma, they give you prednisone and cortisone. You have a headache, they give you prednisone and cortisone. You have urobile bowel syndrome, colitis, Crohn's disease, they give you prednisone and cortisone. Like everything you have, you have poison ivy, they give you prednisone and cortisone. All right. So there's a lot of different ways of the way I figure out what's wrong with people. Listening is very important. I know a lot of doctors will have a surrogate do the uh, intake, maybe the receptionist. I do the intake because there may be some connecting of dots that I can figure out with my 45 year background that maybe the receptionist who has no background in this would figure out. So I got to hear it. Just as the one attorney said, you've got to listen to the patients, but then you have to have the knowledge base to know what it means. You know, you can listen to someone speaking in foreign language, and you wouldn't understand anything. You've got to have the information. Also, observing people. This is very important. Physical exam. Uh, then there are, of course, diagnostics, uh, which have limitations, which a lot of people don't understand. And that, that's what happens a lot of times. People go to a doctor. They have symptoms. The doctor runs all these technological tests. Then they say, there's nothing wrong with you. Well, that's very insulting. Then they may even tell you to go to a psychiatrist. No offense to the psychiatrist here. I mean, there's a place for psychiatry, but sometimes people really have organic problems. I know a woman, Ann Fram, who was sick. They kept telling her it was in her head. It was her husband. It was, it was her family. And finally, the husband came in and said, there's nothing wrong with her family. There's something wrong with her. I've lived with her for 17 years. She's never been like this before. And you better start running some tests. They ran some more tests, found out she had cancer throughout her whole body. They were making it into a psychological problem when, in fact, she really did have a physical problem. I don't think there are too many malingerers out there. I think most people that are sick really have a problem. I don't think too many people are making it up. All right, now I also use uh, methods that are not technological, like uh, applied kinesiology muscle testing and uh, various other things that I do. All right, so what I do in my practice or natural healers, I don't have acupuncture, I do acupressure. Uh, unlike Dr. Uh, Seebeck, who spoke before, I do the acupressure. We do trigger point muscle therapy. I've had people that had uh, carpal tunnel. We fixed in five minutes or less. Frozen shoulder, five minutes or less. People that were scheduled for surgery. People that had surgery that failed. Carpal tunnel surgery is the most common surgery in the United States. It fails 90 to 95 percent of the time. It's not performed in Europe because it doesn't work, and the doctors there do not have the incentive of making money per operation because they're on a salary rather than a fee-for-service basis. So in Europe, they almost never perform carpal tunnel. 
because the people that have tingling and numbness in their hands, it's usually not coming from the wrist. It's coming from tight muscles in the forearm, upper arm, chest, neck, misaligned vertebrae, or in the 5% that they do have a wrist problem, carpal problem, it's one of those small bones in the wrist, and all I have to do is do a little adjustment, and that gets rid of it. Now, uh, some of the other presenters were talking about positive mental attitude, very important. Uh, there is a wonderful video on YouTube called The Placebo Effect. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's uh, Leslie Stahl. Uh, the Placebo Effect was on 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes, The Placebo Effect, Leslie Stahl, correct? Yeah, you, ne you need to watch this. Because I heard someone talking about knee operations and speeding up recovery with acupuncture. What they did is they took two sets of people that were diagnosed that they needed knee surgery for their meniscus. Incidentally, I was told 30 years ago that I needed it, and I never had it. I just took supplements and corrected it. A friend of mine went the uh, surgery route, now he has a knee replacement. But what they found was they took these two groups, half the group that actually did the knee surgery, the other half, they put them under anesthesia, made the incision, just sewed them right back up, didn't do any surgery. The people who didn't have the surgery, fared better than the people who had the surgery. And they thought they had the surgery. I mean, they all thought they had the surgery. Half did, half didn't. So it's very interesting. The placebo effect, P-L-A-C-E-B-O, uh, 60 Minutes on YouTube.com with Leslie Stahl. I think you'll find it amazing. What they found is that people on antidepressants, uh, if they have mild to moderate depression, it doesn't even work. That would be relevant for some of you here in the mental health field. And of course, we have mood lift and uh, other products that might be more effective, certainly safer. Okay, uh, they keep saying I'm too close to the mic. But everyone can hear me? You all can hear me? Okay. Uh, like heel pain. Usually it's coming from tight muscles in the uh, calf, you know, the leg. So there's this whole concept of pain referral. I had a guy that came from Florida, he had a mouth stroke, he recovered from that, then he had eye pain. No one would touch him in Florida. So some doctor in Johnstown, where he was originally from, told him about me, he came up, and I said, it's coming from the upper trapezius. I never touched his eye. I just worked on this muscle here, in five minutes, the eye pain was gone. Since he had made the trip, and he hung out in Johnstown for about a week, visiting friends and family, he came back a week later, still no pain. That Christmas, like six months later, he sent me a present, still no pain. Fixed in one visit, the eye pain was coming from a muscle in the shoulder. So we look for the cause, we don't treat the symptom. Of course, I'm a chiropractor, we do chiropractic adjustments. We help a lot of people with blood pressure problems, and regular heartbeat, just doing chiropractic. Very often we do combination muscle therapy, nutrition. That's what makes our clinic, I think, somewhat unique. Uh, So-called incurable diseases. Fibromyalgia, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, blah, blah, blah. I, let me tell you something about this. When you go to a medical doctor or any other practitioner and they say nothing can be done, what that really means is there's nothing they know of to fix it. Okay? Because I have this every day. They come to my office and say, I'm told it's incurable. No, the people you're going to don't know how to fix it. doesn't mean there isn't an answer out there somewhere. You've got to look for it. You know, just like if you shop around. A friend of mine had trouble with his air conditioning. First guy said, you need to replace the whole unit. He said, you can't get parts for this unit. It's too old. He called up Sears. It was a Kenmar appliance. They said, no, parts are available, and you don't have to use ours. They're interchangeable. Get someone fix it for $350 as opposed to $3,000. So, you know, when you're buying something, you shop around. You need to, but if you go to the people with the same training, that's not a true second opinion. If you go to 10 conventionally trained medical doctors and they all have the same knowledge base, you're just going to get the same answer. You have to go outside to someone else with a different knowledge base. All right, now uh, we have two case histories here. The lady on the left, anyone here have any idea what that is, this terrible rash? She came in, she was being treated for an auto accident. And Dr. Orbach, my associate, knocked on my door and said, can you come in and see Nancy? And she had gone to a medical doctor. What do you think the medical doctor gave her? Prednisone and cortisone. Thank you. 
What do you think that is? As soon as I saw it, I knew what it was. Intestinal parasites. Now you're going to say, she's got all these red blotches on her legs. What's going on? The parasites are causing bleeding under her skin, but the parasites are not in her legs. They're in her intestines because your venous blood supply goes from your legs into your intestines. Okay? Sometimes people get swelling. I've seen people that have, you know, no discoloration, but they have swelling in their ankles, and the doctors are wrongly putting them on diuretics saying that they have congestive heart failure, when in many cases it's nothing to do with congestive heart failure. It could be parasites clogging up the lymph flow, and that's why they get the swelling. So we put her on a product called Paracleanse that we carry, and uh, here she is two weeks later. It's almost all cleared up. Okay, look at this guy. Now, we, we, I think we passed out a picture of this or we have it available for you. This is my little climax of my presentation. This guy, I, we, we have a thing called the Weiner Wellness Week. We do it five times a year in our office in Green Tree, which is right near downtown Pittsburgh. I handed out this flyer. If you didn't get it, come over to our office. We have one starting next Saturday, a week from tomorrow. It runs for seven straight days. We have five free presentations every day. There's no charge to get in. It's free, and we even feed you for free. We have free vegan, vegetarian, wheat-free, dairy-free meals for you. Eat as much as you want. We have health experts answer your questions for free, and we have five presentations every single day. I'll be speaking at six of them. I'll be gone next Saturday because I have to go to a health conference, an anti-aging conference in Florida. So we have someone else speaking. My normal time is 12 o'clock, but I'll be there the following Monday through Saturday. So hopefully you got, all got this. If you want extras, we have them over here. All right, so this guy wandered in during the Wire Wellness Week, October 2nd of last year. He didn't have an appointment. In fact, Mikey G, who's sitting right at this table in the middle there, knocked on my door and said, Dr. Wire, you gotta see this. I came out from talking to a patient. Here's this guy with his huge cancerous tumor. I said, do you wanna get well? This is an important question to ask your patients. Do you wanna get well? Some people have psychological reasons to sabotage their own recovery. I don't need to tell you that, those of you that are in the mental health field. Oh, I don't know what I did here. Uh, I can experiment. Let's see. Uh, what, what do you uh, play with that? I'm technologically challenged. Let's see if you can get it bigger. Anyhow. Oops. There we go. So his name is Ron. He said, I don't want them to chop off my ear and they were going to grind out the inside of his ear. And of course, then he'd have balance problems, let alone hearing problems and wouldn't look too good. So I wrote down a piece of paper, my recommendations, a vegan vegetarian diet with certain supplements. And the bottom right hand corner, here he is, uh, November, December, January, February, March, five months later. But I'll tell you, when he came in two months later, you see it was basically gone. And uh, he's happy as a lark. And I actually have a better picture of it. Uh, I think that's before we uh, clean the blood out of his ear. I took him to the bathroom and clean up the blood in his ear. So did everyone get one of these? Anyone not get one of these? If you didn't get it, I think a picture is worth a thousand words. Okay, do I have any a time or am I out of time? Okay, I have like five minutes. We're going to open this to questions. Any questions about anything in the health field? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of people who don't get cured. We're not claiming 100% cure. First of all, a lot of people come to me after they've done chemotherapy, which really greatly undermines their chance of recovery. Okay, sometimes they've done a year of chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, all this kind of thing. It keeps recurring even though they told they got it all, which as I said, the tumor is not really the cancer. The cancer is the body's immune system has failed, the detoxification system has failed, they're very acidic, they're very toxic, they have too much sodium, not enough potassium, and the doctors are just treating the symptom of the underlying problem. And I liken it to if your uh, idiot light in your car the red light coming on showing that the uh, engine's overheating. If you took that to a mechanic, the mechanic put some uh, black magic marker on their red light or maybe uh, 
pull the fuse out or maybe punch the light out, and you say, this is ridiculous. we got to figure out what's wrong. Well, of course, most mechanics would look under the hood, ignore the red light, and maybe there's a broken or loose fan belt. Maybe the water pump's not working or leaking. Maybe the radiator's leaking, whatever it is. Maybe you need some oil. The oil pump's not working. And they correct whatever is causing engine overheat. They never even look at the red light. The red light goes out. The tumor is like that red light. It's like if you had a smoke detector in this room and it was battery operated and went off. Most people would look around to see if there's a fire or maybe get out of the room. A medical doctor would take the battery on the smoke detector. So the trouble is that a lot of the people we get are end stage. Uh, we've had people with terminal cancer that survived, but they were usually people who had no uh, sabotaging treatments, the cut, burn, and poison routine that I showed you, uh, that basically we, we, the cancer survival rate has not improved at all in the last 50 years. With the exception that you have to understand that they have earlier detection. So let's say someone 50 years ago was detected with a cancer and then they lived uh, two years. And now their cancer was detected a half year earlier. Now they're going to say, there's 20, 25% improvement in survival. No, the person still died on the same day. They just knew about their cancer longer because of improved detection methods. So outside of a few types of cancer, like uh, certain lymphomas, uh, the cancer survival rate really has improved. And it's a weird thing where they'll say, if you survive five years, you're cured, and then you could die the next day, but if you die of a disease that you're cured of. So cure is not the same thing in cancer and has this funny definition of five years here in the United States. So yeah, we don't cure everyone, but the thing is that I think there's a lot of different things that can be done for someone. And as some of the other speakers said, we have to take a proactive approach instead of just being passive. So people need to find out why they're sick. And sometimes it might be, who's the matter with me? Not what's the matter with me. There's a whole book called, Who's the Matter With Me? And if I had time, I'd tell you some examples of people that had, one lady had breast cancer and it ended up, uh, she didn't want to get rid of it because of the whole situation with her husband. And once she realized that, the tumor went away. So sometimes it's, who's the matter with me? So there are psychological problems, and that ties in with this conference here. Uh, a couple other questions before I have to sign off. Yes, doctor. Bigger part? Well, she, she's saying that uh, I guess she disagrees with me. Oh, I, I'm just saying that they, they, if they detected earlier, they're now saying the survival rate is longer, even though maybe their survival rate's the same, they just detected it earlier. And the other thing is, is uh, sometimes uh, they get all excited. We'll say, well, this person was supposed to die in one month, and now we can extend their life three days. And so now they have a 10% improvement in lifespan in a matter of 72 hours. You know, she's saying that life expectancy is, well, but what we have to look at, I'm sorry, let me, let me answer that part of it. The life expectancy has improved in the United States from the age of 12 on. The, the big difference over the last 100 years is the greatly decreased infant mortality rate. So if you look at the life expectancy of someone in 1900 who made it to 13 years old, and now it's only increased like five, six years. So you have to throw out the infant mortality, even though we're still 17th in infant mortality. And a lot of that has to do with uh, hygiene. Uh, you know, years ago, I, I went to a lecture at the University of Pittsburgh. They used to dump the sewage from the toilets uh, upstream and then take the water downstream and pump it into people's houses. So a lot of people were getting tuberculosis. They were uh, getting diphtheria. They were getting all kinds of uh, uh, diseases uh, from the lack of hygiene. A lot of people didn't have indoor plumbing. We didn't have refrigeration. So a lot of the improvements in life expectancy uh, are due to hygiene and not really any other factor. Right. What, what else did you want to ask, Doctor? Yeah, so I mean, we have to look at it that, uh, you know, if you look at life expectancy from the age of 13, not from birth, uh, the great, the increase, and also surgery. Uh, when I was three years old, I was pushed on a flight of cement steps and they did emergency hernia surgery. Otherwise, I probably, probably wouldn't be here because I had a strangling hernia. So 200 years ago, they didn't have an operation, I would have been dead. So, uh, you know, if you figure I'm 68, I probably would have been dead when I was three years old. So uh, some emergency surgeries and things probably also factor into the life expectancy. 
But now they're saying that kids under the age of 20 are going to live shorter lives than those of us over 60. I think vaccines have a lot to do with it. I think they're food quality and people eating at fast food restaurants, et cetera. Okay, so I, I think my time is up. I'll be over at the table. We have all kinds of free information, and I appreciate all of you coming to this conference today. God bless you.